During the opening credits, a young girl sits in a bathtub filled with water. Suddenly, the water turns red, caused by blood spilling in it. We hear a woman entering the room to scold the girl for what she has done, oblivious to the strange occurrence. The scene changes, introducing us to a strict-looking woman's face. She looks disappointedly at a man who is working outside. He uses a chainsaw to cut branches from a tree while being supported by a ladder. The woman Anne walks by the ladder to purposefully kick it from under him. This causes the man to nearly fall. Lucky for him, he doesn't land on the ground because of the rope tied around his waist. His co-worker rushes to him and blames him for the near accident. Despite the woman's action, he asks the guilty Anne if she is okay. Once the man who was cutting the branches descends, he rightfully says it was Anne who kicked the ladder away from him. But his senior co-worker, Nick, disregards his statement and scares him with the threat of getting sued for saying that. In the next scene, we see the head of a doll getting picked up off the floor. There is a photo of a young girl nearby. Anne is gluing the doll's head onto its body. She hears a girl calling out to her mother, prompting Anne to leave her apartment to see the young girl sitting in the corridor of the building. She already knows her name, calling the girl Julie. Julie's problem is that she locked herself out. Anne invites Julie to her apartment. She says she could show the girl her butterfly collection. Julie happily agrees. Anne shows her a jar that she uses to trap and exterminate the insects. To speed up the process, she adds a small amount of chloroform into the jar. The next step is to place the lifeless butterfly on a mounting board. We see one with its wings held by several pins in a straight position. Soon a rough knock sounds at the door. Anne opens it to see a panicky lady standing near the doorway, who can't find her daughter. Anne calms the lady by informing her that Julie is with her. Julie's mother Claudia tells Anne that sometimes she hears strange noises coming from the latter's apartment. Anne acts confused. As Claudia is leaving with Julie, Anne hears the girl telling her mom that she forgot about her, like she always does. In their apartment, they continue to argue until they hear a loud bang on the wall, the force of which makes a framed photo move. It happens a few more times and Claudia puts her ear against the wall, but hears nothing. Later, Anne enters a taxidermy to acquire supplies for her butterflies. After she places the materials in the trunk of her car, we observe a few curious metal objects in it, seemingly an odd choice of tools for an insect collector. Once she comes back home, Anne finds a notice on the floor. It informs her that she is forbidden to carry out renovations without a certain permit. Then the man whom Anne nearly injured severely earlier, rings her doorbell. She looks through the peephole for several seconds before opening the door. The man is Chris, telling her that Nick sent him to fix the window frame. He was also sent to offer an apology for accusing her of knocking his ladder earlier. Anne tells him it's okay. As he's entering her flat, he says he saw her with Julie in the corridor the other day. She seemed annoyed that he saw them together. The woman feigns ignorance again. At this moment, we get a flashback of Anne with Julie, exactly where Chris said he saw them. Anne holds the child and asks her in a disciplinary way if she understands something. Out of the flashback, Anne says she didn't notice him. Afterward, she invites Chris to her butterfly room. A peculiar sight catches his eyes, and he drops his bag in shock. Anne makes the most of this distraction and sprays Chris with a dangerous solvent. The man falls to the floor, writhing in pain. The chain of events suddenly reverses, stopping at a time exactly a month ago from this unfortunate moment. A month earlier, Anne is sitting in the cafe area of a mall, noticing a sad girl sitting alone. Anne comes to her. She asks the young girl why she is crying and learns that some people took her money that she was saving up to buy a doll. To solve this problem, Anne buys the doll for the girl. The girl Alice says she wants to pay Anne back, but Anne insists. This is a gift from her. No payment is necessary. Anne might consider it a gift however, Alice says her mom will think differently. She would not allow her daughter to accept a free gift from a stranger. So the girl asks for Anne's phone number and walks away. For some twisted reason, once Alice is out of Anne's sight, she puts the doll that Anne just gifted her into a trash can. Later on, Alice rings the doorbell to Anne's flat. Anne opens the door to invite the girl inside. Alice gives her a drawn portrait of the woman. It portrays Anne as a slimmer, more attractive version of herself. Anne also has a gift. She takes Alice into her butterfly room. The girl looks around and asks why Anne puts the butterflies into boxes. It's to prevent them from flying away, Anne replies. She gives a big, blue butterfly to her young friend. Soon Alice looks at a piece of art on the wall that has the name Dorothy written on it. Alice learns Dorothy is Anne's daughter. The woman adds that she flew to heaven. Prior to leaving, Alice takes out the money she owes Anne for the doll that she bought her. Yet, while Anne is taking it, Alice asks if she could keep it instead. She is certainly a strange girl to offer money, 
only to ask for it back. Anne also thinks it's strange because she makes a face when hearing such a statement. But she agrees and lets Alice keep the money. After the girl leaves, Anne slams one of her walls with a sledgehammer. This disruptive action causes a photo to fall in Claudia's apartment. Julie comes to the wall to knock on it. Then she puts the photo back on the wall, which is now cracked. Following this, Anne arrives at a building to enter a room that isn't her apartment. She starts taking clothes from a closet and notices several drawings nearby. They remind her of the one Alice gave her. She also finds her framed butterfly there. Anne sees a note on a table that states to feed the bird. Whoever wrote it says they won't be back. As Anne looks for the bird, she finds it deceased already. Peculiarly, the next scene shows Anne putting a dress on Alice. The girl asks if it belonged to Anne's daughter. Anne just answers, it's hers now. Those kind words prompt Alice to share that Anne is like her mom. After that, Anne enters an elevator to descend to the ground floor. As the lift goes down, she unrolls the carpet inside it. She puts on some biohazard equipment before pressing the emergency brake button. She opens a secret trapdoor, using her dangerous solvent to spray a lady she must have placed in there. Suddenly hearing a knock, Anne is forced to stop. Attempting to put the lid back to cover the hole in the lift's floor, it falls a notable distance by accident. Anne hurries to roll the carpet back to cover the hole. Once the door opens, a man steps inside. He nearly falls by stepping on the carpeted hole. Lucky for Anne, the man seems too drunk to notice. He doesn't even notice her very unusual attire. To him, she's a complete blur. Soon the man starts laughing for an unknown reason. He is clearly out of his mind. He continues laughing as he exits the elevator. Alone again, Anne resumes what she left off. She reaches inside the hole in the floor to collect the lid since she is now at ground level. Lifting it reveals a human arm that seems to be corroding. Finally, she finishes her job by placing the lid where it belongs. Later on, Anne enjoys dinner with Claudia and Julie at Claudia's place. From the way Anne interacts with the girl, we can see they like each other a lot. In a short time though, Julie uses a foul word, forcing Anne to shame her. This brings us to a flashback of Anne instructing Alice to use her right hand instead of her left. She scolds the poor girl for being unorthodox. In an attempt to make her normal, Anne ties Alice's left hand to a part of the chair. Out of the flashback, Claudia tells Anne that her daughter keeps talking about the butterflies Anne places in her jar. After Julie leaves for bedtime, Claudia says it was easier when Julie was younger. These are the same words we heard at the start of the film from the woman who held the girl's Soon we learn that Claudia is separated from her husband, but she talks about her office manager with a smile. It's getting serious between them. Claudia comes closer to Anne to reveal she is pregnant. It could be a chance for a fresh start, she says. He could be the father Julie always needed. Claudia shares how the two will spend time together when he gets off from work. Anne confirms the time that will happen out loud, arousing suspicion. Claudia wants to go on a weekend getaway with him and would like it if Anne could watch Julie while she's away. Anne agrees to it. In the next scene, we see Anne dragging a heavy bag outside. She tosses it into a dumpster. Then she arrives at the mall, where she finds Alice with her mom. Anne is upset, telling Alice she thought her mom was crippled. The girl's supposed mother asks Alice if she knows this woman. Betraying Anne, Alice says she doesn't, which causes Anne to raise her eyebrows. When they leave her sight, Anne sees the doll we saw her with earlier, gluing the head to its body. The weekend approaches and Claudia leaves in a taxi. She has told her daughter that she will return in three days. As Anne is walking away with Julie, Nick bumps into her, asking if Chris ever came to her apartment. Although she says he did, she lies heavily about him being very rude to her. She had to ask him to leave. Nick tells her that Chris has been missing for three days. Anne disregards this information and keeps lying, saying Chris wanted to be violent with Nick. She tosses trash in the bin, and Nick notices the bag that Anne just discarded. He checks what's inside of it. It's something we don't see, but it's clearly an uncanny sight. Nick looks up at Anne's window tensely. Following this, Julie lies in bed in Anne's apartment. She gets out to spy on Anne working in her room. The woman is talking to herself, saying Alice's name in the process. Once Anne turns around, Julie quickly hides. During this, Anne gets another flashback of her seeing Alice right with her left hand again. She approaches the poor girl to scold her for it, prompting Alice to yell at Anne to stop doing it or else she will leave, never to return. Eventually, Anne stops her behavior. As Alice is leaving, Anne hands her an allowance of $100. Anne asks her who the woman was at the mall earlier. The girl simply responds that she will see Anne on Friday before touching her face gently. Back in the present, Anne is driving Julie to school. Julie asks what school the girl in the butterfly room went to. Anne says there is no such girl and Julie is not to enter that room. 
It's very dangerous there. After dropping Julie off at school, a boy comes near Anne's car. When she starts talking to him, a lady aggressively tells Anne to stay away from her son. We're taken back in the recent past with Alice. The girl gets in a taxi from Anne's apartment. Curious to know where she's going, Anne follows the taxi in her car. When Alice gets dropped off at her building, Anne pulls up seconds later. Shortly after, a limo pulls up behind her. Anne watches a lady exit the vehicle prior to Alice coming out to greet her. They enter the limo together. Once the limo leaves, Anne exits her car to go find Alice's apartment. Locating it, she knocks on the door, which is opened by a lady. Anne asks if she is Alice's mom, and instead of answering her, the lady assumes Anne is Olga, the woman who arrived in the limo. She tells Anne she has been waiting for her. Inside the apartment, the lady Monica says Alice tells her that Olga has been very gentle with her. She thinks Anne is Olga, but Anne wants to tell her something. She says she started tutoring the girl in the French language. Alice asks her for money. Every time she comes, she asks for a bigger allowance. Monica is slightly surprised to hear this. She also says it was much easier when Alice was younger. Furthermore, Anne learns Olga is the one Alice would turn to if Monica wasn't there for her. We finally see that Monica walks with crutches because she only has one leg. Soon, Anne looks into another room to see the parrot we saw previously in a lifeless state. Before they exit the apartment, Monica gives the keys to Anne. Outside, Monica says Alice is determined not to end up like her mom. She will succeed at whatever she chooses. Near the elevator, Monica tells Anne to spare her the nonsense about Anne helping them. She says Anne isn't saving Alice. It's Alice who is saving her. We see the elevator is not on the level with the floor. There is an opening under it big enough for a person to fall through. As Monica is stepping onto the elevated lift, Anne kicks her one leg, causing Monica to fall. Anne follows this action by using Monica's crutch to beat her. Being at a severe disadvantage with just one leg, Monica is powerless to fight back. Anne uses the crutch to push the crippled lady through the opening under the elevator. This is how the poor woman ended up decomposing below the elevator. Returning to Monica's flat, Anne watches from the window. How a heavyset man yells that he's sick of the noise Monica makes with her clients all day. Afterward, Anne looks at the note on the table we saw earlier. Except there is an additional statement there, saying Monica won't be back until Friday. Anne has modified the message by cutting out the last two words. The next scene shows Anne scolding Julie for attempting to enter the butterfly room. Anne reminds Julie that she is never to go in there. Then they both enter a room where Nick is working on a window. Julie tells the man that Anne keeps a little in the butterfly room. But she doesn't say it to get Anne in trouble. She merely says it factually since it is interesting to her. The poor girl's naivety gets Anne in trouble. Anne clarifies to Nick that the girl is just a figment of Julie's imagination. Once the two adults are alone, Anne gives him a drink. Nick tells her he knows what she did and what her strategy is. Anne behaves confusedly to those words. He specifies by disclosing that he knows how she threw away a big sack of tools in the dumpster the other day. He knows she's been demolishing the wall without permission. Hearing this brings relief to Anne. Her ugly secret is still safe. Anne asks if Nick usually looks through people's garbage, and he tells her not to play games with him. Nick says when people asked about Chris, he spared Anne a lot of trouble. The man leans in to suggest that she could be much nicer to him. He starts talking about how his workers could work very quickly and quietly. They will not ask questions. Soon Nick moves a big cabinet to cover the door to the butterfly room. After that, he continues to ask her if he wants him to do work inside her apartment, but she dismisses him. Nick's ego is bruised, and he backs away, saying he'd better not hear another complaint of noise from Anne's apartment. At the mall, Anne thinks she sees Alice. Unfortunately, it's not her. Elsewhere in the mall, she hears a lady behind her say the name Alice. The girl spoken to says the name Olga. Hearing this, Anne knows she found Alice. Then we see Alice and Olga in the mall washroom. Anne enters it too, preparing a syringe. She approaches Olga to inject her with it, making her lose consciousness. Alice, occupying a stall, calls out to her. Of course, Olga is incapable of answering. Following this, we see Anne talking to Julie. A lady joins in their conversation. She looks at Anne, calling her, Mom. Apparently, Anne does have a daughter of her own. In the next scene, we see her in Anne's apartment. Interestingly, aside from being Anne's daughter, she is the same woman who yelled at Anne for talking to her son at Julie's school. She is Dorothy, and she wants to know what's going on with the girl Anne is with. Anne tries touching her hair, but due to some past trauma, Dorothy gets upset and yells for her mom to leave her alone. She says she went through a lot of therapy. Julie is there to witness this uneasy mother-daughter reunion, prompting Anne to instruct her to leave. Of all places, 
The girl decides to hide in the cabinet blocking the butterfly room. Anne tells her daughter she is watching the girl until her mom returns. Nothing better happened to her, Dorothy says. She doesn't want an innocent child to go through what she did. She also demands that Anne not show up at her son's school anymore. She yells for Anne to stop pretending everything is okay. Hearing all this, Julie covers her ears. Her elbow manages to break the fragile back of the cabinet. Looking through the hole she created, Julie sees the doorknob of the butterfly room. The curious girl reaches out to it, while Dorothy takes the piece of art with her name on it to shatter it on the floor. Julie opens the door to the forbidden room to peek inside. Once Dorothy leaves, Julie exits the cabinet. The door to the butterfly room does not close completely. At night, Anne hears a creaking door. She comes to her special room and sees it open. She also sees the hole in the cabinet. Shortly after, inside the room, we see her silently putting a shoe on a girl, who eerily looks lifeless. The next day, Julie tells Anne that she thought Anne's daughter perished at a young age. Apparently Julie's mom gave her that piece of information. Anne says her mom tells her lots of lies. She also lied about where she went for three days. Anne says her mother went away with Julie's new dad. The young girl does not like hearing this and calls Anne a liar. Soon, Julie reunites with her mom. One of the first things Julie says is that Anne has a little girl butterfly room. Inside Anne's apartment, Claudia complains to Anne that the man she went to see had a son and did not tell her about it earlier. She considers Anne as her friend. Anne learns that Claudia has aborted her pregnancy. Upset with this news, Anne says she can't claim the life of However, Claudia doesn't want anything that reminds her of him. She is disgusted with the man. Soon Claudia gets up to search for her daughter. Looking through the cabinet, she sees Julie in the forbidden room. So she enters the room too. Julie tells her to look at something. In a short time Anne enters the room, saying she has a present for Julie. It's all that is left of Alice, she says. We see a red dress hanging on a wall with some photos of Alice. Somewhat disturbingly, there are some butterflies there with photo cutouts of Alice's head attached to them. Before Claudia leaves with Julie, Anne gives the girl a jar containing a butterfly. At school, Julie sits with Anne's grandson, showing him the jar with the butterfly. He tells her she should make a wish to the insect. It won't be heard by anyone except the Great Spirit. She instantly wishes she had a brother. Then she opens the jar, which allows the butterfly to fly out. Afterward, Claudia comes to pick Julie from school. Dorothy is nearby, asking to have a word with Claudia. The scene shifts to both of them sitting together. Claudia asks with some concern what happened. Dorothy shares her traumatic past with her. It is the initial scene of the film, where the girl sits in a bathtub full of water mixed with blood. This time we see her face. Her mom enters to poor girl, and of course, this woman is Anne. Thankfully, the girl's father rushes in to pull Anne away. He hugs his daughter. With this story's conclusion, Dorothy says she repressed this memory. Needless to say, Claudia is shocked to hear that this is who Anne truly is. The person she thought was very kind, the one whom she trusted her daughter with is really an individual. In the next scene, Claudia is driving Julie. She asks if Anne did anything bad to her, yet the girl says they had a great time. Despite Julie saying this, her mom says they won't be seeing Anne anymore, because she is wicked. In the woman's defense, Julie says, at least she does not lie to her like Claudia does. Later, Claudia visits Anne to berate her for mistreating Julie. As she walks away, Anne grabs her arm and says she's barely present in her daughter's life. She's too busy being with men. Claudia pushes the woman down to escape her grasp. But Anne retaliates in the worst way by taking a piece of the shattered art to slam it on Claudia's head. Claudia passes out. Anne drags her into her apartment before wrapping her in plastic. Back in the past with Alice, Anne gives her the doll we saw in the beginning. Unfortunately for Anne, she discovers she isn't special in Alice's life. This upsets her to the point of her aggressively holding Alice's arm. She realizes Alice entered her life for money. Since Anne does not let go of her, Alice beats her with the doll until its head breaks off. When Alice pulls herself free of her, she tells Anne that she is moving out of state. So this is the end of their twisted relationship. To this sad news, Anne says she very much wants Alice to pin a butterfly as a memory. Back in the present, we see Anne placing the wrapped Claudia in a bathtub full of water. The disoriented woman wakes up, which makes Anne hold her down to subdue her. She clearly intends to claim Claudia's life. Meanwhile, Julie is looking for her mother. The scene alternates back to the past, where Alice is pinning a butterfly in the special room. Anne tells her that only she can give Alice all the love she needs. After those words, the crazy woman holds a sponge with chloroform to Alice's mouth, making her lose consciousness. Returning to the present, 
Julie enters the butterfly room. She opens one side of a cabinet full of mothballs and sees a shoe sticking out. Once she opens it completely, a deceased Chris falls out, causing Julie to scream in fear. Subsequently, she looks at a photo of Alice on the special wall dedicated to her. Due to what she has just witnessed, Julie becomes unhinged and starts wrecking the room, starting with the special wall. She even breaks the glass that supports it. Horrifyingly, the broken glass reveals a perfectly preserved Alice. At this moment, Julie hears Anne call out to her from behind. She says Alice wanted to leave her, but now she's there with her forever. Anne shows Julie the girl's plastic-covered mom, making her scream in agony. Julie manages to escape into her apartment. Away from the action, we see Dorothy entering her house. Julie picks up her landline to call for help, but drops it out of fear due to Anne's nearby presence. Luckily, the receiver falls on the redial button, which happens to call Dorothy, since Claudia called her earlier. Talking into the receiver, Dorothy doesn't get to hear anyone, for Julie is away from the phone. Anne starts banging on the wall and Dorothy puts down the receiver. Afterward, we see Nick leaving the building, while he hears the banging coming from Anne's flat. It prompts him to go back inside. Entering the crazy woman's apartment, he calls out to her. Soon he finds the deceased Claudia wrapped in plastic. He certainly made the correct decision to return. Switching back to Dorothy, the lady goes back to her phone to make a call to Claudia. However, since Julie never put the receiver in its proper place, Dorothy hears the girl screaming through the phone. Nick witnesses Anne use a sledgehammer to demolish a wall. When she breaks it, she looks through the hole she made to see Julie huddled scared in her apartment. Dorothy hears her mom talking in a scolding manner to the girl in addition to Julie's fearful scream. Therefore, there is no other option except for her to rush to her car. Julie runs out of the building and Anne chases her. She sees Julie running into the road while a car is fast approaching. Anne pushes her out of the way and gets hit by the car that her daughter is driving. Once Dorothy sees it's her mother she slammed into, she finishes the job by driving into her again. This was the butterfly woman's last moment, rightfully delivered to her by her. Dorothy comes out to hug Julie. The final scene shows the girl celebrating her birthday at Dorothy's house. Dorothy seems to have adopted Julie as her daughter. Her husband tells Julie to blow out the candles on her cake with her brother. We see she got her wish by acquiring a brother, Dorothy's son. Although it seems like a comforting ending, the moment the boy stands with his mom, she says he looked much cuter when his hair was different at his younger age. She seems to be imitating her mother's behavior. Her incessant touching of his hair bothers the boy, and he tells her to leave him alone. A photo gets taken of all four of them, with Dorothy being the only one who is unhappy. Our view zooms in on her unhappy face until the film ends. Anne may be gone, but Dorothy is her daughter, and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree.